Kelsey's here. Is this one of the guys you're talking about, Kyle? Who fall? He was the sixth guy, and I always like I like when someone takes Eckler ahead of Kelsey. Eckler, not a bad pick, but like wasn't particularly efficient rushing last year. Is getting older. Like I, I take Kelsey over him, so I'm glad someone. Yeah. You doing it, Denny? I'm no. Oh, I <laughs> you're in the time. All right, there you go. Good. I would I would simply never take a tight end in the first I, round. I I took uh, I took AJ Brown, folks, because uh, I have small scale panic attacks when I don't get all the Eagles in these drafts. Do we so you go so prophetic that you tweeted out this link, uh, you know, follow Denny Carter on Twitter. He tweets out of the links door live shows Uh, at 3 PM. I will draft a best ball team on Twitch while ignoring advice from Rota Pat and Kyle tweets here. I just talked about how much I love when one of my top six, you don't have to take the players I like, but it was prophetic. It Denny, was. do we have any concern about the Eagles passing attack, not running as hot as it did last year? And they're just being like real deal target competition right. between Devontae Smith, AJ Brown, Dallas Goddard, uh, maybe DeAndre Swift. Is mm-hmm. is the pie going to yeah. be as big again this well, year? Well, there, there are some stats out there. I think we have it in, in some blurbs. I, I may have included it in an article recently that show that um, the insanely positive game script that the Eagles had last year really suppressed their second half and particularly fourth quarter uh, the passing numbers, passing output, uh, because uh, simply, simply put, they they just sat on the ball uh, with with huge double digit leads. All right, I'm up here. So do I? Wait, do I need to take Hertz here if I'm stacking? I would Shoot. wait and see if he makes it back to you. You have Jonathan Taylor at 18. Like I'm not an yeah. early running backs guy typically, but we were taking him 101. I, I wasn't, but I was like 102 last year. Like and. What has changed? He got like did he get seven, seconds, seven seconds. Seven seconds. All right, one, I'm blaming JT, this one. I'm, Tony Pollard. Ooh, Tony Pollard on the cover of our magazine, and he passed him up at eight. I'm blaming this on Kyle. I I took uh, I took Taylor. Uh, I was actually thinking of taking Devonte Smith, oh, and then boy. hoping Hurts got back to me. That was some real boomer propaganda from Kyle there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tell me more about this. What, well, what Kyle, let me tell you more real quick about all we hear is the negative case for Jonathan Taylor. When, uh, I mean, last year, quite literally, everything went wrong, including him spending the majority of the year playing through an ankle injury, including him spending the majority of the year playing in a non-functional offense. Uh, Up for debate how much more functional it will be under a rookie quarterback in Anthony Richardson, who is about as raw as it gets for a first-round pick. But we have Mr. Eagles man himself, Shane Steichen, calling the shots. Uh, JT bounced back to, like, elite status. Seems like it's just being wildly under-discussed as a potential 2023 outcome does it not kyle yeah i mean we see the shane site even two years ago when in philly the team wasn't the powerhouse the juggernaut we saw last year they had one of the most valuable backfields in the league just because they run the ball a lot they're a balanced team and they run it really well they've been i believe fifth and eighth or something like that in total expected fantasy points for the backfield in both of the steichen years sure like maybe that falls to like closer to league average if this offense really struggles but like We saw them struggle last year, so it wouldn't be a departure from what we saw then. And even if they do struggle, we're getting one of the largest cuts of the pie in terms of a running back share of the offense and share of the backfield. So I'm like, he's young, hyper-talented, can play on all three downs, was like clearly was maybe the best fantasy back heading into last year. And like injuries and bad luck kind of just happened. Like, I don't know. I, I, I definitely think I wouldn't be like, saying you should take him as the one-on-one again this year. There's uncertainty, but we're so wide receiver hungry right now that you're getting truly elite, yeah. like game-breaking type of running backs later in drafts. Yeah, Denny, you weren't, clearly you weren't adamantly opposed to it if you're the one no. who clicked, clicked draft. Right, right. No, I wasn't because, because I mean, you know, Kyle's right. Like, like how often, I, I don't see Taylor going getting to 18, 19, 20 in these drafts very often, so, or ever. Um you know, so I, I did, I did take him. It was, it was about two picks past his ADP, but you just, a guy like Taylor never falls past his ADP. No, no. Uh, so I, I felt, I felt okay about now. I just want to, I just want to be clear folks from a zero RB zealot like myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will be drafting no more running backs in this entire <laughs> draft. I just want everyone to. And of course you have just activated the termination clause and you're going to be seeing it. Listen, it's Taylor or bus. If Taylor gets hurt this year, I won't have any more running backs. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC sports and rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least 
being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going so either way thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen and now I'd like to ask you respectfully 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 okay respectfully please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news fantasy headlines from Rotor World and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.